Hello everyone, it's OneSock Tube, back with the first installment of OneSock Radio in quite a long time. Oops, long. do you like Lexus? There are people who like Lexus, people who are not interested in Lexus, people who do not like Lexus very much, people who used to like Lexus but are not so interested in it these days, etc. I think there are a lot of people. Please feel free to comment in the comment section below. The theme of this year's video is the same as last year's video with a similar theme. Is there a shift away from Lexus? This year's theme is the same as last year's video. Therefore, in my conclusion, it appears that this is not occurring at all. This is because Lexus had record sales and registered algebra in January and February of 2024. Currently, things are going great for us. However, I must admit that my enthusiasm for Lexus has started to diminish slightly. We conducted a survey to inquire about the shift in interest towards Lexus within the previous year. This gathered data embodies 146 characters. The response that was most frequently given was, I have the same level of interest. This tendency might be attributed to the fact that my YouTube channel has gained a substantial following among Lexus enthusiasts. Being a blogger, I frequently share my adoration for Lexus in my posts. In fact, my YouTube channel is called OneSockTube. I enjoy expressing my love for the brand on various platforms. Therefore, I believe that a number of individuals who have been observing since that time are enthusiasts of Lexus. However, I have a feeling that the world and the viewers of my channel have become less interested in Lexus in recent years. Perhaps the reason behind this is that my channel's videos lack appeal and fail to captivate viewers' interest. A couple of years ago, just by putting out a Lexus video, the number of views increased tremendously. So we released a video comparing LBX and UX in response to viewer requests last time, but it did not receive many views. I have been putting out a bit of Lexus videos lately, as well as various LBX travel videos and delivery videos. But I think the word Lexus is becoming less powerful than it used to be. This is not just my channel, but also the journalists. And I don't think the car related channels around me are getting hundreds of thousands of views or so as they used to. I wonder why this is, but when I put up a video of a Triton or Forester or something, for some reason it plays. But on the other hand, the video is being played more like Crown or Velfire. In other words, I think it means they are clicking on it when it appears on the YouTube home screen, etc. I feel that the shift to Toyota cars is of interest to a wide range of people, not just those who are registered. How about you all? Those of you who say you've always been interested in Lexus and have been watching. Moreover, individuals who previously enjoyed viewing Lexus videos seem to have lost interest lately. There are people who have never watched Lexus videos before, and there are also people who have recently become interested in Lexus and have started watching them. I am confident that there are plenty of people out there. If you are one of them, please let me know in the comments section below. I don't think many individuals are currently watching this video simply because it features a Lexus. But I think this is really only part of the story, because Lexus sales are growing. Perhaps it is because the NX and other models that were on the waiting list are starting to be delivered all at once, but the sales numbers seem to be very strong. If sales are the best ever, I think that must be very good. But there is a part of me that is getting a little cold towards Lexus. I'm no longer as excited as I used to be. I did buy an LBX of course, though it is a nice car. The meter, which was my biggest complaint about the LBX, has been resolved and it's still my favorite car. 
I don't know why I am not convinced. I have analyzed the cause. Maybe I'm just not convinced. Maybe it's just that my channel's Lexus viewership is not growing. But I decided to try to verbalize the causes of this, so I analyzed it in my own way. There are several factors that came to light. The first factor, and I think the most extreme one, is this. It means that Toyota cars are too good. So until now, Lexus had a lot of equipment that was only available on Lexus and there was a lot of goodness that only Lexus could offer. But recently, that has disappeared. I think it is safe to say that they are really gone now. For example, seat ventilation was rarely found in Toyota cars. I don't think there were almost any Toyotas that had them five years ago. It was only the love for or so that started to come with them. I wonder if the Prius had it. Some grades of Prius had it, even from the previous generation model, but not many. It was on the Harrier, it was on the Love 4, it was on the Prius, it was on the Crown. So, this is a part that has already become a citizen's right and is getting very good. It's not just for Lexus anymore. In addition, there was a unique Lexus quality called Climate Concierge. This function measures the temperature of the seat upholstery, outside and inside temperatures, and optimally adjusts the heated seats and steering wheel heater. I'm talking about things like auto heated seats, auto air conditioning, auto steering wheel, auto heater, etc. It is now commonplace for Toyota vehicles to have them. The Crown is equipped with it. Velfire and Alphard also have it. Up until about 10 years ago, the connected functionality was also a good thing, that G-Link which is unique to Lexus. But now it is also available with T-Connect Navi, and concierge services like the owner's desk are also available in Toyota cars for a fee-based cost of 330 yen, for example. These days, the agent function is also artificial intelligence, so if you say, hey Toyota, I want to go there. It will even set a destination for you. And that's no longer a Lexus only good thing. Also, the automatic map updating that was called Maps on Demand was a good thing that was unique to Lexus cars. It is now commonplace to have a connected navigation system. The latest map data is reflected in Toyota cars in real time, and the navigation screen reflects the map information in the cloud. So it's about the difference between Mark Levinson and JBL. Although Mark Levinson is only available on Lexus cars, the advantages unique to Lexus, such as connectivity, can now be enjoyed even in Toyota cars. Then, there is no difference. The Lexus is better in terms of the quality of the interior. Having said that, Alfred Belfire and others are very good. Of course, the driving quality is better than Lexus, better than Toyota, but it may not be the critical factor. I guess you could say that it is no longer easy to understand. The unique advantages of Lexus are no longer easy to understand. Also, as a Lexus owner, I'm not very happy with the fact that some of the equipment is outclassed by Toyota cars. Take for example these gauges. The LX, RX, NX and other Lexus cars also have full LCD gauges. The others are the recently released LM and LBX and the upcoming GX. So it's already been in the Corolla for about a year and a half. That has not come down yet. There were annual improvements to the NX and some minor changes there, but even so, the adoption of LCD meters was not adopted. There is a history of the 12.3 LCD meter being used in the UX, but for some reason it was not used in the NX. Why not? 
I guess there are many conveniences, but I have a thought, even though I would very much like to recommend Lexus. The Crown Crossover and Crown Sport are pretty much the drum version of the car that I can recommend. But then when people ask how it compares to the NX, no, I'm confident that the NX is better because it's a Lexus and now it's hard for me to make a recommendation in my opinion. It is frustrating to have a high price but inferior equipment. That's why I hope Lexus will introduce more paid options that can be changed later, like the Kinto factory. It would be nice if the imbalance between release dates could be eliminated and the latest products could be introduced. Even if it costs 100, 0, 200, 0 yen, I think many people would probably want to install it. As for the LCD gauges, the LBX is also out and has LCD gauges, but it is not the compact luxury car that breaks through the hierarchy that was initially expected. It is still very frustrating that we did not get the three sacred treasures such as seat ventilation, electric telescopic tilt, and a power passenger seat. That's a shame. I can't push it with all my might. It runs great, looks great, interior quality is great, but it's in the price range of over 5 million yen. The price of over 5 million yen is about the same as the price of the Lexus NX of a decade ago. Considering this, I think it is a shame that it is not equipped with various features. I guess there are requirements such as vehicle weight, but it's a shame. The first point I don't agree with is that they are losing out to Toyota cars. So it's very nice, like the Crown Sport. There are a lot of things about the hybrid models, like they don't have paddles. If someone asked me which one is more advanced or better to drive compared to the NX 350H, etc. and the Crown Sport, I would probably choose the Crown Sport right now. The price is cheap, it has advanced drive, the gauges are 12.3 and the navigation system is not that much different between 14 and 12. The NX has some nice features, like heated rear seats and electric recline in the rear. But when you look at it as a driver's car, the Crown Sport looks better and the Hybrid looks better. So, as a Lexus fan, I don't agree with that. I want it to be the strongest in everything already. Toyota and Lexus are supposed to be the upper brand. And the fact that Lexus is inferior to Toyota in some areas is something I don't agree with as an owner or fan. I think it is a part of what I would like to see in a higher level reciprocity. In the area of infotainment, there are many areas where I feel that Toyota Lexus is lagging behind its rivals. The navigation system has gotten much better since the NX debuted but Nissan and other navigation systems are more organized in the way they look and the amount of information they can display. That is the kind of thing that is missed. The ease of use of the touch tracer, etc. is also missed. Second, prices have gone up a lot. This is not limited to Lexus, but includes both domestic and imported cars. Especially for imported cars, prices are going up a lot. So Lexus is not the only one that is expensive. But in RX, this 500H is 10 million yen. When I bought mine in LX, the total price was 14 or 13.5 million yen. <laughs> LM is 20 million yen, right? It is a very executive spec with two rows of seats. But even if it has three rows of seats, the price would probably be around 14 million yen. That would be the equivalent of two Velfire cars. Would it be worth twice that price?
I think something more penetrating will be needed. It has the same navigation screen as Toyota and inferior infotainment meters to Toyota's. As for that brand, I wonder why I'm buying Lexus. I'm proud of Lexus after all. The reason I don't feel that way as much as I used to is because Toyota is getting too good. So I hope Lexus will surpass Toyota. I hope that they don't overdo it. As someone who has already bought more than 10 Lexus cars, I especially agree with you recently. I am not convinced when I think about value for money, cost performance, and brand value. I put out a video called the 12 best cars to buy. I chose 12 cars from 2021 that I am truly glad I bought in the last couple of years. But unfortunately we have a situation where not a single Lexus was in there. This is very shocking to me. I love Lexus so much that I thought of myself as an unofficial Lexus evangelist promoting Lexus, but Toyota is still too good because of its products. That is the part that I find frustrating. So Lexus is that bad? That being said, it's not that bad at all. But the last time I compared the Yaris Cross and the LBX, they are sibling vehicles, built on the same platform and powertrain. Toyota is Yaris Cross and Lexus is LBX, and the price difference is 1.8 million yen. But how did they compare? The ride quality of the Yaris Cross is also very good, but the LBX is of a much higher quality. I am sorry to compare them. I was surprised at how different it was using the same platform. It was a high quality and precise drive. It was very good. I'm currently driving an RX 500. It's been a year now. RX 500 F Sport Performance, which is also very nice to drive. It's quiet, it's fast when you step on it. The fuel economy is there. It can run on the motor and it has driver assistance safety equipment and hands off. It's good. The Crown Crossover RS is also very good, but there are parts of the RX that are better than the Crown Crossover RS with the added dynamic quality. The precision of those dynamic textures, the precision and precision and the quietness are even better than Toyota's. It's fine, but it's still hard to convey in words, and it's not something that can be seen and understood. That's a part that you can't understand unless you experience it, so it's hard to convey. Since Akio Toyota became president, Toyota and Lexus vehicles have already improved dramatically in driving performance. That's part of what makes Lexus cars drive better than Toyota cars. But it's hard to convey. If you compare them, you may understand, but it is almost impossible to compare Toyota and Lexus cars at the same time. So I bought both Yaris Cross and LBX, put them both side by side, and compared rides on the same day, and I knew they were different. But after one day, after one night's sleep and the next day's ride, I think it will be like, which was better? The absolute rating can vary, and it also depends on what you were riding just before. So the difference is not that obvious. So if you ask me if 100 becomes 200, I would say that 100 becomes 115 or 120. The difference in dynamic quality between Toyota and Lexus is that the powertrains are sometimes the same, even the transmission and so on. It is difficult to make a product so good that 100 becomes 200.
I think the quietness has improved, the dynamic quality has improved, and the 100 has become 105, 110, 115, 120, and so on. If you ask me if that would be 200, it is still difficult to say. I think that is a difficult part to convey. It is difficult to communicate, and there is probably almost no way to communicate it. I think this is the part that probably won't be communicated to the general public unless there is some kind of test ride event to compare rides. If you ask me if Toyota cars are bad, they are not bad at all. In fact, both Yaris Cross and Crown have good qualities that are positively good. That is the part that is hard to convey as value, the difference in dynamic texture. That is why I am not convinced that the presentation of the obvious advantages in terms of appearance and equipment has been lost. The third point is a bit more detailed. When comparing Toyota and Lexus vehicles, the Lexus has less information that can be displayed even though they use the same 12 3 inch wide gauges. Why? I think that too. I would think that a crown or a caroler would be more informative. I don't agree with that kind of thing. The video didn't cause me to leave Lexus, but it was very unconvincing to me. And I am very unconvinced by the dilemma between Lexus cars and Toyota cars these days. I'm not stopping there, but what do you guys think? I would love to hear from Lexus owners. I'm still glad I bought it. It has a totally different quality than Toyota cars. I'm insanely satisfied. I think there are some people who say, I don't know. I don't know. I've only had Lexus for a long time. I think there are people who say, I don't know. I have a few thoughts on Lexus versus Toyota cars. I know there are some people who say they have switched to an importer. Please, Lexus owners or those who have never driven a Lexus, those who used to watch Lexus videos but no longer do. On the other hand, if you are interested in Lexus because of the LBX or some other car, and you look at it often, I would be very happy to hear various opinions and comments of support and encouragement. So, the video shows that the Lexus separation is not happening, but I am not convinced. It's just a video of me talking away, like a one-second radio show. If you like that kind of thing, I would be very happy if you could press the like button. Once up Tube has bought more than 10 Lexus cars. Or is it more than 10? CT, IS, NX, RX, 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 UX, IS, NX, RX, LX, LBX. You bought 12 cars. This was a video to express my opinion on Lexus by Juan Sofi, who has bought more than 10 Lexus cars and 12 Lexus cars. So please look forward to the next edition of One Soft Tube. This was One Soft Radio.